Hey guys, welcome back to the latest Baby Pips Forex Education video series. So if you guys have been following along, we are in the elementary school in grade four, talking everything about moving averages. And in the last video, we talked about the simple moving average. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the exponential moving averages. And um, so the exponential moving average in this particular tutorial explains what the uh, EMA is and how it differs to the simple moving average. So the way I'm going to walk you guys through this is I've got trading view uh, up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through a following example of how the exponential moving average differs to the SMA. So if we take a traditional SMA and whatever instrument I've got up here, uh, we're going to take five uh, points. And as you know, what it does, it adds up the number of points um, in the in the range that you're doing. So this will be a five period SMA. So we'll take the last five closes divided by five to get you your point, or in this example of 5.06. Now, what I've done is I've taken the same price, act, uh, well, same instrument or same price action. And what I've done is I have changed the second, um, we'll call these daily, uh, daily closes. And I've changed it from 4.9 to 2.2. So if we do the exact same calculation of the SMA, as you would imagine, what it does, it lowers the overall amount uh, because of this downward move. Now, when you look at moving averages, what you really want it to do is you want a moving average to react to price as quick as you potentially can. And this is one of the drawbacks, in my personal opinion, of the SMA. Because what the SMA does, it takes an equal weight of every single point um, and then divided by uh, the number of points that you've got to get you your period. What the exponential moving average does is that it gives a greater weight to uh, more recent action. So instead of, you know, adding all of these up and uh, and treating each one individually, it provides more emphasis on more recent price action or most recent data in the series and therefore would give you uh, a more accurate in this example a bigger number because in this particular example let's just say i don't know that this was a economical announcement or an earnings announcement for a stock which caused the stock to drop completely now what you can see is is the stock has fully recovered, in fact, gone higher than what it was from day two. Now, this is not reflected in the SMA calculation. And that and that is where I think the flaw is, because I don't care about this one off black swan event. I only really care about where price is currently trading. And I want my moving average to kind of reflect that. So that's the main difference where the SMA gives equal weight to each data point in the series and the EMA takes um, more weight to the latter part or the newest data points in the series to make it more accurate. Now, what I've got here is I've got the Euro USD chart up and what we've got, we've got the SMA, so the simple moving average 30 uh, which is the red line, and we've got the EMA 30 period moving uh, moving average, exponential moving average, which is the blue line. <clears throat> now, the two things I really want to call out here is, is that you'll see that the blue line is more reactive to price movements. And that, again, is down to the weight is being used on the latter past or the newest data points of the price action. And secondly, so if we take <coughs> moves, for example, like, uh, if I get back here, uh, this imply impulsive move up, you can see here with the simple moving average, um, it doesn't really uptick at all because each one is given a given weight. But as soon as you get this bar over here, you can see that the blue line, the exponential moving averages starts to move upwards because it's taking most recent price action as opposed to equally weighting uh, 
the price action of the uh, kind of lower bars. So this is where, in my personal view, and we'll talk about more about the pros and cons in the next Baby Pits video of the pros and cons of both methods. Um, ultimately, it's down to personal preference, but I really hope that gives you an introductory view of the difference between the exponential moving average and the simple moving average and again make sure you click on the thumbnail of the next video on your screen now like and subscribe and i shall see you guys in the next video